All right, guys, welcome back. And tonight I'm out here trying to finish up on a few jobs that I picked up the night, the days of the uh, event up at May May's. Uh, I had a few ornaments that I got ordered because I was backed up and, and couldn't turn them out that day. And it was a local lady. Uh, so she gave me her order and I'm working on getting those started. Uh, I've got the, uh, all but one of them done. I had to totally design it. She took one of my designs and kind of wanted to tweak it to have her own little custom ornament. And so I've done that. I've also been working on a design that I'm doing for a box for a wedding uh, that I'm gonna be engraving. Now, I don't know that I can uh, necessarily release all of the design features of this box. So you're gonna get to see an edited version of the box so as to not give it away. Uh, I'm gonna check with the lady who I'm making it for just to be sure. But I'm gonna kind of walk you through the steps that I go through to do these two projects and we're starting the video off in front of the heater tonight because it is cold out here for Alabama weather. Uh, we're still down in the 30s and I have not got adjusted to it yet. So uh, I've been spending a lot of time standing over here in front of the heater and uh, trying to stay warm. So stick around and we're gonna move over and get to work. This is a couple prototypes of the designs that I was working on. Uh, this is an existing snowflake that I had, but I went in and used offset to add a couple of extra lines to it uh, to create that, uh, the extra detail in the middle, the little, the little snowflakes in a snowflake, so to speak. Uh, just added, added extra line. I did interior lines, inset with a line, spaced it in a millimeter or two, and I just kept playing with that until I got a look that I liked. Uh, and then I did the text and did a little bit of an oval with the text. This was the first prototype and this one was a bit small. I didn't like the way the text was kind of bunched up against the top. So I stretched it, made it a little bit bigger. And this is the, this is the, the final product, so to speak. Uh, this is what I went with on the other burn. I had a total of six of these to burn and I've got one more of my uh, little, Yorkie or Terrier design uh, that I have went in and I'm, I'm laying text in behind the dog. Uh, the year on one side and then a name on the other. So I'm, I'm working on getting that burn out. And then of course I gotta glue that one up and let it dry. Uh, the second project that I have tonight is this was provided to me by the customer. This is an engrave only job and I've gotta engrave this box with some designs. Uh, the customer sent me a little mock-up of what she had in mind and we're going to be doing an engrave on the outside of the box and then I'm going to be opening the box up and she wants an engrave on the inside of the lid. Uh, so that's going to be a little bit of a tricky setup, especially with the burn being down in the hole uh, because I'm not going to be able to set the focus depending which machine I use and uh, and run across the, uh, across the surface because the lip of this box is going to have me way out of focus if I go out. If I get it on focus and I try to frame or try to move outside the workspace, it's going to hit. All right, guys, the first thing that I'm going to do with this box here, I'm going to go ahead and get this set up and start the engrave on the outside of it. Uh, but, and then I'm going to be doing finishing up on this other ornament, getting the other ones off of the machine, and then we're going to come back and do the interior part of the box. So I wanna do the outside first, but before I can do this job, especially with the way that this is configured, I have to know where the center of the box is. So that's what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna set this up. I'm gonna measure the top of the box for my alignment of my exterior graphic. Uh, and this thing is two millimeters shy of 170. So I'm just gonna split a millimeter on each side to keep from having to do any math. And then that'll, <laughs> that'll have me at eight and a half centimeters to the center. So I'm just going to make a real faint mark with my, this is one of those mechanical pencils. And I just make a really faint mark, uh, f faint enough that I can see it, but not too much that it's going to be a mess to get off when I go to sanding, because I will touch this up with the sander when I get done. Uh, and on this axis, I'm going to have to go, it's 13 wide. So I'm going to be going with, uh, six and a half on this direction. So I'm gonna make me a little faint little plus sign right there on my center. And I'm gonna go back on that first mark just to, so I don't confuse myself. 
and uh, erase that guy. So I've got the center of that marked. And, and when I say faint, guys, I mean I keep it really, really faint so that I can get it off easily with a sander or I can hit it with my eraser before I sand it and make sure I get it all off. And on the inside, I'm going to have to do the same thing. Uh, and this graphic that's going on the inside is kind of... Uh, it's kind of a, a text mixed with some images. So it's gonna be kind of hard to, to eyeball that thing. So I'm definitely gonna have to have some measurements to go with. So I've got my marks in here and I've got that about as close as I think I'm gonna be able to get it with it being done in that hole like that. Uh, it looks pretty, pretty centered. Uh, so we're gonna call that, we're gonna call that centered. And I'm gonna be moving this over to the machine and go ahead and set up the exterior burn real quick. Uh, another thing too I want to point out too, this is a little small pine box. It looks like maybe it came from Hobby Lobby or somewhere similar. Uh, it's very thin, so not going to be able to go too, too hot because this little thin pine right here uh, would, could possibly cut through with a 10 watt because this is probably only about three millimeters thick from the looks of it. All right, I've got the, uh, the box over to the machine now. Uh, the next step of this is I need to make sure I've got my machine homed and I'm going to be walking my laser over to the box. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to the little map uh, icon. I'm going to pull my camera up, update the overlay, and I'm going to try to freehand this thing to the center of that box depending on how accurate my camera is today. All right, so I didn't quite get it where it needs to be. I'm going to go back to the move tab and I'm going to turn the laser on at 1% and I'm going to use this laser to kind of jog up and over until I get it lined up with the center of my workpiece. Uh, I'm going to go a little right. And what I'm doing is I'm just jogging that little blue dot that the laser is making and I want to put that right on top of my little plus mark for the center of the box. Uh, leave one more click right. Once I get that done, I can turn the laser back off using the fire button. And then I'm going to select the graphic. And up at the top right corner of the screen, there's a uh, button, it's like a crosshair with a red dot in the center. I'm going to click that and that is going to move the graphic and it's going to center it where the laser head sits now. So we'll go ahead and frame that out and kind of see how much of my workspace this is going to take up. Make sure, make sure it's not too big, not too small. So that's a pretty good size area, but this graphic is not a solid graphic. Uh, it does have some, uh, some, some features to it. So what I'm gonna do, I think that is gonna be what I need to go with. So I'm gonna turn my power up to 100 and I'm gonna turn the speed down to about, let's go with 70. I'm a little afraid to go too much hotter than that with this particular wood. Uh, seeing as how I, I, I can't exactly burn a test grid on this thing. So what I'm going to do now is launch it into design, but I'm going to go ahead and double check. I'm running the uh, lines per inch at 127, uh, filling groups together, 70 speed, 100% output, need some glasses. And here we go. Now this is gonna take a little while, and with this particular wood, I'm not sure exactly what species of pine this is. Uh, this thing may turn out to be too light. If it does, I may have to rerun the, uh, the burn again, but I didn't wanna to go too dark and uh, cause too much of uh, indention into the wood. So basically, I'm just gonna let it run, look at it, evaluate it before I touch it, if I think that it needs to uh, be darker, then I can rerun it and go from there. All right, while that one's burning, I'm gonna be getting these other ornaments out. Uh, these are the modified snowflake ornaments that I made for this lady. And get this piece of wood out of here and get these guys out. Uh, I'm just gonna go through, make sure I don't have any snags or anything that need to be cleaned up. Uh, this was a pretty knotty piece of wood. Uh, about time for me to re-up. And I'm gonna hit these with the sander and get them shined up. 
and ready to go. And then I've got a, a while I'm doing that though, I'm going to be burning the uh, Yorkie emblem, uh, ornament that I have and getting it ready to go so that hopefully within the next 30 minutes or so, uh, I'll be through with ornaments and all I'll have to do is the inside of that box. So I'm going to get to that. All right, guys, the, uh, the top of the box is finished burning. It isn't as dark as I thought it was going to be, but to be honest, it's got enough of an engrave. The color kind of matches the box. I don't want it to go too dark because it might clash. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna stick with that color right there. Uh, I've had to edit the graphic for TV because I, I I did talk to the customer and they don't mind me sharing it. Uh, but I'm gonna try to keep from sharing names just just as a precaution. So that's the. That's part of the design. Keep in mind, I'm having to edit the name off the bottom. There is a name at the bottom, but we're gonna edit that out for now. So that's the, uh, the top part. Uh, design came out really well, looks pretty nice. You can see a little bit of the grain carrying through the graphic, which is expected, uh, especially with a, with a wood like pine. And that's one reason I don't wanna really try to go any deeper because if I go deeper, uh, the lines in the grain is gonna carry out even more and it just it looks pretty cool like that so i'm gonna i'm gonna leave that the way it is now for the inside the inside is going to be the tricky part guys uh because i've got to engrave on the inside of this lid and i've got to get at least enough in focus that it doesn't make a mess out of the burn so i'm going to flip the box around that way i'm going to be using the squaring jig to make sure that it's square uh, the lid is not exactly level, so what I'm going to do on that is I'm just going to grab some uh, scrap pieces of wood here and try to come up with the right combination to get it relatively flat. I'm not worried about it if it's a little off, but I don't want it a lot off. So I'm going to just go stack some wood underneath that. Luckily, I have varying thicknesses of wood. That looks pretty good. So in order to set the focus on the machine, with this nozzle, it's gonna be it's gonna be close. I might actually be able to pull it off with the Z1. I'm not sure if any of my machines is gonna be able to pull this off without without hitting. I think it's gonna be it. Uh, so I'm gonna have to uh, reset my depth using these screws. Basically, all I've got to do, take the screws out and move them up higher. Uh, that is one thing that this thing is really good about is the uh, range of movement that you can get out of the Z-axis without having to uh, put legs under it or space it up or anything like that. So there's where my focus needs to be to get the, the best cut. Uh, that's going to be way lower than what the, uh, the top of the box is. So the only options I have is one, take the air assist off completely, which is definitely an option or two, just try to stay inside the box when I'm cutting it. All right, guys. So I've made a decision. Uh, I have decided rather than taking a chance on messing this up since this i don't have any extra boxes this is not something of mine uh, i decided that the safest bet for me to do is to take the air assist completely off take the nozzle off it's due for a cleaning anyway so i've taken the air assist nozzle off and i've got my focal tool back in here and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to set this thing down get the focus where it needs to be and with this machine guys the the nozzle like i said i can go from all the way up here and i can go way down so that's one reason why I, I kind of like this machine for engraving is the versatility of the height and the fact that once you take the air assist nozzle off this guy, it does give you a pretty substantial standoff from your material. So I'm gonna put these, I gotta put these four screws back in here that hold the laser head onto the gantry. And once I, once I get a couple of those tightened down, it's not going to move, but I'm going to go ahead and put all four back in to make everything, make sure everything is aligned properly, and we're going to get this burn underway. Put this last one in and get it tightened down. Uh, so I have the, the air assist nozzle completely off of the machine, 
And so now the machine will clear the box. So I don't have to worry about it hitting. And like I said, the guys, the nozzle without the air assist and the, without a shield, this machine, I mean, literally it's like maybe five millimeters below this module. So I'm gonna do the same process I did earlier with the interior design. So what I'm gonna do now is take that design out, get rid of it, and put the other design back on my workspace. I gotta rehome the machine just to make sure I've got everything, the machine knows where it is because I've been messing with the focus, I've been messing with the, the gantry. I wanna make sure it knows where exactly where it is. Uh, now I'm gonna update my, my overlay using my camera. And I can see the lid, so what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to just aim it like I did earlier and then we'll fine tune it from there once I get it in the ballpark of my mark. I'm gonna fire the laser and I'm going to line it up with my little mark there. All right, so I've got it centered now. I'm gonna do the same thing I did earlier. I'm gonna select the entire graphic. Now, because of the orientation of the box, my graphic is in my workspace upright. So I'm gonna to need to, to rotate the graphic 180 degrees because the, the object of this engrave is to be able to see it when the lid opens. So I'm gonna flip my graphic upside down in essence, and then I'm gonna tell it to move it to the center of the laser. Now, I can tell you right now, my graphic is way too big, uh, but I'm gonna frame just to see where it's gonna ride. Uh, because there's a chance i want to try to fill the interior of this lid with this burn but i don't want it on the edges so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna frame and see exactly where it's gonna go all right so that looks like that's gonna fill the interior of the box so that's the way i want this graphic because this is kind of a wide but thin graphic so i want it to fill the interior of the box up i just think that's the best it's gonna be the best look for it so I've got that frame in the interior of the lid. So I'm good to go, glass is on. I'm gonna double check my orientation. I do have it oriented properly because there's no redos on this, guys. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, since, since I know what this wood's gonna do now, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the speed down to about 60. That's not gonna hurt anything. Uh, it'll make it a little bit darker and we're good to go so here we go all right while we're waiting on that one to burn i'm gonna get back over here on this one i've got the last of these ornaments is now burned uh, all i've got to do now is take and put this one together got to do a little sanding and i will have this job completed which is uh which is a good thing all right, this is uh, one of my little Yorkie ornaments that I, that I make. I sell this. This is in my animal bundle, pet bundle. And I did the background. I did the image, everything on the background. And once I put these two together, it's going to have the name and the year in the back piece with the silhouette of the dog up front. So that's what the customer wanted. And that's what All right, guys, made. I got through with the sanding operation just in time. The box is wrapping up. It's on the, the grass at the very bottom of it. Uh, so it'll be done here in just a second. Uh, but I just, like I said, this is some of the stuff, and I know a lot of times I don't share everything that I do with you guys, but this is how you come in from work in the afternoons and you come in the shop and make yourself a, you know, a little bit of spending cash here. Uh, the ornaments, like I said, I don't make a killing off of these things, but you know, I've got 40 or so dollars worth of ornaments. I've got a sign I've got to make. That's gonna be another five or so dollars and then like a $25 engrave on this box. So, you know, it's a little it's a little cash. It goes to support my habit, gives me something to do. I enjoy doing this and believe it or not, people actually pay me to do it. So, that's what it's all about. But let me get this thing open and we'll see how the box looks. I've got to upgrade the fan in this enclosure. It doesn't pull as much of the smoke out as I would like. I think I'm going to do away with the inline fan maybe and go with another another vacuum. So, everything looks good. Don't see any need to go over it anymore, so I'm gonna go ahead and touch my, my workpiece there. 
And that is what we ended up with on the inside of the box. Let me see if you can see this. So that's the inside, all right? And then there's the lid. So, you know, when you open the box, there you go. But I'm not sure if they want me to stain this thing or leave it as is. Staining was definitely not in the conversation that we had. But as far as I know, I'm done with this guy. All right, guys, that's gonna conclude tonight's video. Uh, I finished all of the ornaments and I'm not gonna show you all of them, but I'll show you uh, the, the design again. Uh, this is after I got through sanding and everything's done. Uh, got those finished. Uh, the, uh, I used the CO2 earlier just to, while I was in here, I wanted to test uh, some clear acrylic again. And I've got the CO2 working the way it's supposed to. Ornament turned out pretty well. This acrylic that I've got, for some reason I'm getting like some melting or some type of chemical coming out of it or something and it's did some discoloration. So I'm gonna have to do some more homework on this type of acrylic to make sure that there's not a better kind for the machine. But uh, since adding the air assist and doing my upgrades to my bed, everything's working great. It, it dropped this in one cut. I've got nice smooth edges with not a whole lot of a lip on the outside. So I've got that worked out. Uh, I had a little sign that somebody wanted. I uh, got that done. And uh, the detail on this thing turned out pretty well, guys. Let me see if you can see it. There you go. Uh, so it turned out turned out pretty good. I got a nice deep burn on that for some Luan. But this is just a little decorative sign that uh, a lady had requested. And of course, the, 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 the job I'm most proud of tonight is, is gonna be this little box right here. And I tried to line it up. Like I said, I wanted to feel the lid the best I could with this design. And I designed it where the top part of the design is open. That way it would just kind of flow. So, and I need to get my eraser help to that as well because I have left my mark in there also. But I'm gonna knock those two off with the eraser guys and I'm gonna call tonight done. Uh, but like I said, if, if, if you have these machines guys and I know, you know, there's people say that you can't make money with them, but I work all day long. I come home in the afternoons and I generally get in the house by about nine o'clock at night. Uh, so from, you know, 5.30, till nine, I'm out here working with the machines and I've got enough machines so that I can actually have three or four jobs going at one time. And I make it, you know, I make a little bit of extra money for, for my habits and my hobbies and stuff. So if that's something you wanna do, you, you may want to uh, diversify your machines like I have to where you have, you know, multiple machines because the thing that I have learned is with one machine, I can only make so much because that machine's tied up and you spend so much time waiting on the burn to get done to go to the next one because diodes are not fast, guys. But if you've got a slow machine and you've got five of them, then you get five times as much done in that amount of time. So that's kind of the theory that I'm going at. Rather than spending $30,000 on a machine that'll do it five times faster, I just get five machines and it's five times faster. Uh, in the case of the Comgrow and some of the other machines, they are really affordable and I can take and just doing jobs with them while my other machines are tied up, you know, in a few months that, you know, that Z1 makes enough money to pay for itself. So those are things that you need to consider. If you have limited workspace, that might not be an option for you, but uh, even with limited workspace here, uh, I am squeezing them in and I've got it going pretty well. So just something to consider guys, small jobs and a lot of them you know, you can make a little cash for your pocket. So thanks for coming. I uh, hope this was helpful. Maybe you learned something uh, with the box. That was kind of an unusual burn. I've done a couple of those. And so I've kind of, I've kind of got a system that works for me. And like I said, with the Z1, it's got that, that the, the, the way the gantry is designed, it has a low dip point that you can dip down into things and the gantry doesn't hit the top of the box and stuff. So that's really helpful. And then if you take the air assist nozzle off, that thing has a really low profile and it's got a, a lot of height between the lens and the uh, focal point. So you can actually get it in focus because a lot of times on stuff like that, I just have to get as close to focus as I can to avoid you know, risking bumping the box. You can actually set the burn up and run it inside the box, but you've got to make sure to turn off your return to after, and you've got to be able to keep that head in the box because if it tries to move outside the box and it can't clear it, then you're going to have a, a crash on your hands. But 
maybe you learned something from the tip tonight, guys. And if if anything that you, you see here helps you, you know, feel free to shoot me a message, tag me on Facebook, uh, you know, a picture on Instagram, whatever the case may be. If you do tag me on Instagram with the hashtag, just keep in mind that I've had to add the LLC to the end of my my name because somebody had already taken the clack shack uh but anyway guys uh that's gonna be it for tonight thanks for stopping by i appreciate the support of the channel uh if you like the video give me a thumbs up hit that subscribe button turn on those notifications whatever you need to do uh I'm trying to grow the channel i had set my goal at five thousand, but i'm trying to hit six before christmas now because we've, we've made it past five so i want to get six before christmas so uh, help me hit that goal if you would. And until next time, guys, as always, be safe and have a good day.